Well, a very good morning, everyone, and thank you for a wonderful meditation. I say it always, we could just sit like this for another hour. Easy. So good to see so many here this morning. We're gradually getting the energy back into the place, and it's nice to see some pink ladies. <laughs> Welcome back, Dinah. It's been a while. And Regina, you look stunning in that wonderful, it's almost like a harem. <laughs> thing, isn't it? And Bob, you're back. Welcome, welcome. All right, a um, couple of things. <clears throat> we all know what the power of the month is, don't we? Well, what is it? Love. And, okay, the power of love, and originally the talk is called Love is in the Air. And um, I don't know why my guardian angel does this, they decide to change things, even the night before. Some of you know that. And I was sitting there and I just was quite tickled. All of a sudden it came into my head, uh, the song should have been, Love Changes Everything. And I thought we could shorten that again. Love Changes. Sure does. As we mature and grow at different stages of our life, it means one thing at one stage and another thing at another. Mm. But there again, it links in with lovers in the air. Me being an old disc jockey, I left school at 18 and went straight to my local radio station. And some of the songs, you know, they're all about love and nothing's changed. 3BA Ballarat is my local radio station, which I listen to. I only listen to that in the car. I listen to Classic FM when I'm at home. And um, I heard them play and I thought, my goodness, they all sound the same. But that's what my parents said to me when I was listening to all those pop hits. They all sound the same. But they're brilliant. I love them. There's energy in them. And I've, I think when I first heard Taylor Swift sing uh, Shake It Off, I couldn't believe it. I was driving over the Pentland Hills and all of a sudden that's when 3BA came in. And here's Taylor Swift. Now this is about six years ago. And she's doing this. I didn't know it was her. And I would have been horrified had I have known. Uh, but this song got shake it off, shake it off, bum bum bum. And it's, I thought it's, this is the most theatrical song I've ever heard. I love it. Basic, you're a Swiftie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not all the time. No. But anyway, the announcer didn't back announce who it was. So, me being me, um, I'm used to radio stations, so uh, I rang the station and uh, I said, who is it? And it was a friend of mine who actually was on. So I told him off for not back announcing it, so I went in and had a cup of tea with him. And it was Taylor Swift. <laughs> Shake it off. But isn't it a true song? Shake it off. And I was speaking to someone the other day who had a bit of work done on their body, and, okay, the body keeps trauma. We might be okay with medication, but there's trauma that needs to be released, as some of you know. And that means we have to go and get the body massaged, and I'm in that stage now where I'm desperately doing stuff like that. Otherwise, I won't even be able to stand up. But I'm ready for it. And as I said to someone today, being in our 70s, we're pioneers. Let's lead the way to see how old we can go. Yet I was a bit concerned, as, and Bob, we were shocked. Was it last year when Barassi passed away? Yeah, and some of the other athletes have passed away too. One of the shocking ones was Murray Rose, who was only in his uh, uh, late 40s, one of the uh, Olympic medalists. And I bought his book. And his mother was in the Theosophical Society, and he was a student of Krishnamurti. And his writings are just phenomenal. Murray Rose's writings inspired by the Theosophical writings. There are many lofty things and lovely things written about love, but some of them, when you look back, they're mainly about romantic love. From the 50s, I'm sure you've all got your favourites. Uh, Jeanette gave it away last week, some of hers. Uh, love is a many splendour thing. True love. Love Me or Leave Me, and Beverly, you'd know them all. And later with the Beatles songs such as She Loves You, and All You Need Is Love, 
at the time, we thought they were all about love. But as we mature, we can see that really, there's another message behind them, universal love, agape. What a time that was. When we look back, I'm still amazed how the Beatles with the Maharishi, it changed a lot of things. I was, as you know, a Methodist, and I gave that up about 15 or 16 or 17. And then when the Beatles came in, I bought that first book by the Maharishi. I've still got it. And no matter what anyone writes today, same as those old Unity writers, nothing has changed. It's just the way they present the message. Which is good, because Jesus said, preach my message to the whole world. Well, now we can. Love. Now, there are many definitions in many books, but probably the most resonating is from our revealing word, which is an amazing book. Love is Charles Fillmore's version. The pure essence of being that binds together the whole human family. And of all the attributes of God, love is undoubtedly the most beautiful. In Divine Mind, Love is the power that joins and binds in divine harmony. The universal and everything in it. The great harmonizing principle ever known to mankind. Agape. Agape, personal love. Impersonal love, rather. It loves for the sake of loving and is not concerned with who or what. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 14, love suffers long and is kind. Love envieth not, love vaunteth not, is not puffed up. Thank goodness for that. Because like the sun as it goes round and the earth and the stars and everything in the galaxy has a vibration. And imagine if it didn't. The, would be in chaos. Imagine if the sun got upset with the moon for taking too much of its attention. I'm not arising this morning. <laughs> and you know, little things like that, we just take it for granted. Everything is in divine order, not human order, divine order. And we are here to learn to do the same thing. That learn to use divine order. So from the writing of Nona Brooks, she's a divine science minister, love is conscious unity expressed as outstreaming good will. Love is a fulfilling of the law. She actually got that from St. Paul. Now we know that there are many laws and the Old Testament gave us those 10 commandments, which were mainly stated, thou shalt not do this, do that, the other thing. Much later, Matthew, uh, in chapter 5, Jesus brings us the magical Sermon on the Mount. And it starts with, blessed are, the, blessed are you, blessed are they, blessed are we. And one of them is, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And Moses asked to see God, but he, God said, you're not allowed to see me. But we know now, as the writings and the, our consciousness is expressed, we are all God in expression. And that is a big thing for some people to take. We're all individual expressions doing our part to express. No wonder we want to learn about divine law. So Moses gave us the Ten Commandments. And when Jesus came, he found that people were trying to keep not only the Ten, but all the many more that came up over time. And one of the book... I think that it's got the most of them in that is Leviticus. And in chapter 19, there are so many laws that Moses gave after the Ten Commandments, because people obviously weren't behaving with them. Uh, one commandment in chapter 19, 18, had the key to the spiritual involvement already tucked away. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love the neighbor, thy neighbor as thyself, I am the Lord. Jesus simplified this. 
In the book of Matthew, chapter 5, love to God is the first, and to love our fellow humans is the second. On these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets. I've paraphrased them. But so have many of the new Bible interpretations paraphrased them. Another one from Nona Books. Love is conscious unity expressed as streaming good will. As St. Paul said, love is the outpouring of the law. A wise Jewish rabbi who lived through to the quarter, first quarter of this first century AD was called Hillel. H-I-L-L-E-L. He was the foremost master of Bible commentary and interpreter of Jewish law in his time. Hillel stated, what is harmful to you, do not do to your fellow. That is all the Torah, all the rest is commentary. Hillel was challenged by someone that came into the temple and said, you know, tell me all about this stuff. And Hillel said, I could tell you by standing with, on one leg, love one another and love God. And all that was tucked away in the old Jewish tradition writings, the Torah. It was there in Leviticus. You know, it is possible that Jesus met Hill when he was about 10 or 12, when he went to Jerusalem with his parents. He went missing. His parents eventually found him in the synagogue and in great discussion with the rabbis there. Sometimes the golden rule is cast in the negative, in Buddhism. Hurt not others that you yourself would find hurtful. Confucianism. Do not unto others what you would not have them do to you. And in Hinduism, do not do not to others that which would cause you pain if it is done to you. Other times the golden rule is put into a positive spin. In Christianity, as you wish that others would do to you, so do to you. In Islam, no one of you is a believer until they desire for his brother that which he desires for himself. My goodness. We've got a whole, we've had a, we've got the rest of the month to think about love. There's so many angles, so many angles. And we know that we're all expressions of the one presence and one power. And Unity's fifth principle states human beings create their experiences by the activity of their thinking. Everything. And the manifest world has its beginnings in thought. Well, that may be so. We've all got our ideas and we, they say we can create our own universe. The beginning of the New Thought movement, probably up until the 60s, I think it started off mainly with hearing. And then as, as they realised these principles worked, ah, abundance. And so everyone's writing an abundance book. And some of them are better than others. I'm sure you've all read um, Think and Grow Rich. I read it when I was 21. Read it through in a, an evening. I thought, oh, this stuff doesn't work. It's like everything else. We have to work at it, not just once or twice. And I had someone last week, no one knows who it is, rang me, and um, I've been talking to this person for a while. And I gave him the prayer of protection. We've sorted it out in our minds now. I find I, I'm using that a lot myself. So um, I gave it to him about a year ago. And he rang again twice. And I said, have you been doing the prayer of protection? He said, what was it again? 
And so every everywhere he went, excuse me, every new opportunity he had, the same vibe came up and he thought everyone was against him, the world was against him, all the things happening around him, evil thoughts and everything. And I can't be bothered with that stuff anymore. I wasn't actually short with the person, but, you know, I said, look, ring me again when you've been doing the prayer. And I don't think they were very happy about that. They just wanted to keep doing things, like the man that they carried to the pool in the New Testament. Everyone just carried him there and let him put his thing out and money would come in and two or two of the disciples said, pick her up, pick yourself up and go in the water. And he did. He picked himself up because he believed he was given the power of belief. And he did it. So we have to work with all these laws. We're also in the middle of everyone else's thought. What a pea soup that is. Oh my goodness. You know, if you're sensitive, and most of you here are slightly empathic, otherwise you wouldn't be here, we feel the vibrations. And we really have to take dominion of our thoughts. Sometimes there are things we can't change. The only thing we can change is our way we deal with them. And we really have to be strong with ourselves with this. I was getting to the stage when we were in lockdown, the thought of driving to the city would freak me out again. And I've talked to a couple of people in the country and they said, oh, I can't stand driving in the city. Oh, Melbourne, oh, horrible. And I thought, don't get into that rut. So I'm making myself go out of my routine and do other things. Got a few things happening this week for that. So we've got to learn how to handle. We all know the basic um, two people. I think Martin Luther King was one who just stood up there and went along regardless. But the other one was, of course, was Gandhi. And the other one was, um, oh, the, from South Africa, Nelson Mandela. Imagine being locked up all those years and he was just the same. I saw him in an interview with the late Queen and they were chatting together as if they'd known each other for life. And yet he was the symbol of an empire that had put him in the position that he was in jail. It was a fascinating turn of events. The man could have taken that anyway, but he said, no, I'm alive and this is what's happening and look what happened there. Now, it's all right if one person becomes enlightened, but it's time for group enlightenment, as we were saying in the meditation this morning. Where two or more are gathered, there's the power amplified, magnified, electrified, and demonstrated. Deepak Chopra wrote his, one of his latest book is We Are the Future of God. Some people are horrified by that statement, but I'm afraid that's the way it is. We have this power. We use this power. There are laws to this power. And we suffer the consequences if we don't use them. So the quicker I wake up to the fact that that's what the law is, I'll still repeat the same old stuff. So we have to get over it and move on. Group enlightenment. It's a big thought, but when you think of it, we're a group here. And isn't that how it's possibly nations started, with a group thought? Because every culture is different, and so the USA started with this wonderful thought, and all these people got together of like mind, not so much now, and the same as in China, and the same as in, in Britain. There was a group thought that put them there. Now it's time for that group thought to work worldwide. And it is, whether we like it or not, and there are some terrible things going on before that happens. But here is where we have to be like those other wonderful people, those way showers, like Jesus and Mandela and others. Hold on to it, hold on to it. Songs we've sung in the past that we thought were romantic songs, 
had become mantras for us. Very so often we play John Lennon's Imagine. And who would have thought, you know, the scruffy looking Beatles? They actually had a message. And it is still here. And we play those songs. And sometimes people come in and they come in on the wrong day when we're playing some of the stuff out of the old hymn book. And we don't always do those. But I like some of those old songs. And a minister from the States we're having a competition with, Reverend Durrell in uh, Fort Lauderdale. He sent out a photograph of all his hymn books. And so I think I'm going to send some back and say, mine is bigger than yours. <laughs> the hymn books. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh dear. Well, it's true. Okay. <laughs> You've got to have a sense of humour. Oh, my goodness. Now, look, I'm sure some of you have got the prophet. Who has? You've all got it. And this is the oldest one I've had for years. And I'm not going to read from it because he writes about love. And it's not always pleasant. But it's true. I'll read a little bit. <laughs> Here we go. Um, when love beckons you, follow him. Though his ways are hard and steep, and when his wings enfold, you yield him. Though the sword hidden among his pinions may wound you. It's shocking stuff, but it's put in a most beautiful way and it's true. And what a wonderful little book that is. So if, while we're on the power of love, have a read of that. I think it's chapter 10. So, I better move on. Time's moving. Love is our power of the month, yet we use it along with all the other powers. I know you say love, just give it. But we've got 12 powers. You can give it if you want. But I'm over that. Our Livingston motto um, has got a guy in a kilt waving a snake. And it's in, a, in whatever, Gaelic or something. And it just says, if I can. And someone said to me, that's a bit negative. You've got to help everyone. Well, you can't help everyone. And sometimes if you're intuitive, you know you can't help that person. But you can send them in the right direction just quite subtly for someone that can help them. And those we can help, we help. We have to look after ourselves. So we combine, what would you combine with love? One of the powers. Wisdom. That's a big one, and that will do. Wisdom, yes. Love used with wisdom and understanding are just one of the combinations we can they change all the time as love changes. So to finish, Emmett Fox wrote, Love is by far the most important thing of all. It is the golden gate of paradise. Pray for the understanding of love and meditate upon it daily. It casts out fear. It is a fulfilling of the law. It covers a multitude of sins. And love is a absolutely invincible power and so it is and so it is thank you